No, I'm nervous. Hello, I'm Anderson Ferreira, a history undergraduate at the Federal University of Acre, also a member of the University Center of Afro-Brazilian and Indigenous Studies. My greatest deed for the race was precisely my example of willpower and, above all else, dignity. This quote is by Jusiniano Klimaku. On today's video, we'll get to know a little about his history. A particularly important personality from 20th century Brazil, a professor and doctor from Bahia known for his successful humanitarian actions in the city of Londrina, state of Paraná. Let it be reminded that his research is reported through the studies from researcher Dr. Maria Nilza da Silva, who wrote the work titled The Black Doctor Justiniano Climaco da Silva, The Pioneering Black Presence in Londrina. Justiniano Climaco da Silva was born on January 8, 1908, in the city of Santo Amaro da Purificação, state of Bahia, in the northeastern region of Brazil. Born as a carpenter's son, his father, named Justino de Matos da Silva, and a housemaid mother, Anastasia da Anunciação, this future doctor carried within his story the descendants of his slave grandparents. He was poor and had no luxuries in regards to his studies. He managed to go to Salvador with the help of an aunt who lived in the city. There, he graduated as a professor, acquiring the title of Bachelor in Sciences and Literature, initiating his teachings as a tutor for Mathematics and Latin. With the money he received, he could then pay for his studies in medical school. He graduated in 1993 from the Bahia Medical School. There were 94 men and one woman in his class, and he was the only black person in it. Some time back, during the decades of 1930 and 1940, the city of Londrina was born. Consequently, it would grow from the efforts of pioneers from differing cultural and racial origins. This region of fertile lands, future land of the coffee, would come to provide bountiful harvests and also contributed to call in people from many parts of the world, even in Brazil from north to south. That way, these news would arrive in Bahia in 1938. Klimaku had an uncle in the city, and he would assure him that it was an illness-ridden city, and that yellow fever caused many fatalities. As such, Dr. Klimaku thought, that's where I'm going. But. When Dr. Klimaku arrived in the city of Londrina in 1983, it was still considered a small city with about 10,000 inhabitants. The first doctors that settled within the city dealt with the lack of resources and materials, but Klimaku was a public health doctor and got to specialize in the treatment of infectious diseases such as malaria and yellow fever. Dr. Klimaku also worked with bursts, stomach surgeries, appendicitis surgeries. He would treat leptospirosis, typhus, tuberculosis, yellow fever, pneumonia, which were serious, yet common diseases at the time, that only improved his interaction with ethics and community behavior. And having a Ford 1928 meant he could tend to people outside of the town as well. The black doctor went to farms and settlements for home care services, dealing with the scorching sun, rain, long roads riddled with potholes and a lot of mud. 
The doctor serviced over 30,000 patients in Londrina. In their majority, vulnerable people lacking financial conditions to deal with the costs, yet there was no problem. Even though he wouldn't charge them, that part of the population could retribute with provisions. Surely, Justinian Klimakwe could not be exempt from racist actions. As in this one time where he'd arrived to the hospital he worked at and a patient asked him to call a doctor. Even though he was a doctor himself. That wouldn't, however, stop him from doing his job with a dedication and quality in that city. In 1947, Dr. Klimaku was elected a state representative with the Democratic Social Party, same as of then Brazilian president Eurico Gaspar Dutra winning the race as the fifth most voted from the state of Paraná and first one elected by the city of Landrina. Klimaku, the black doctor, was an example of humility and compassion, of seriousness and dedication to his professions, be it as a lecturer or as a doctor. His memorable feats last to this day, as is the case of the building of the Santa Casa, to this effort, he donated his medical briefcase and dedicated himself voluntarily to the first aid center of the institution for two decades. He was the owner of one of the first newspapers of Londrina, the Paraná Journal. He was also a founder member of the Londrina Medical Association in 1941, which he directed for many management cycles. The Black Doctor, a physician so admired by his humanitarian and humble spirit, died on August 27, 2000, at the age of 92. His trajectory surely inspires us, also our many young ones, black men and women, who think of rewriting the patriarchal and colonial structure so black people can be openly accepted into the medical field. We'll be leaving it here, but it's important that this story persists as an inspiration to us, young and elderly, men and women, that we can also occupy positions of power and propel knowledge, humanity, charity and humility. We can break apart from the Eurocentric societal structures, from leading upon our bodies. With that said, what about you share this video, leave your like, and make of this message a collective one. See you in the next one. Que coelho